All right, well, thank you. Um, if there are no further questions from the, from the audience, what I'd like to do is maybe just give a quick wrap up of some things that I've, I've noticed today that I think are actually quite useful and important uh, moving forward. Um, and obviously I'm sure you have your, your own that you'd like to, to share as well. But um, so today, uh, the, this session really focused on uh, really understanding uh, Norwegian and Nordic understandings of rural development and change and putting this into conversation with wider European initiatives uh, coordinated with uh, ESPON. And um, some of the key takeaways I think here that have been raised across all of the presentations uh, have to do with um, very basic understandings of how we think about, how we define, how we um, identify key problems in rural contexts. What do we even define as a rural environment? How is it related to other rural, uh, to urban environments? Um, and this pertains to a whole host of, of issues. So for example, there's a very basic methodological challenges that we're dealing with here in terms of say uh, data availability or types of data, for example, that are integrated into these uh, different forms of analyses. So in some cases we're dealing with much more straightforward demographic data. In other cases, it's uh, maybe economic data. In other cases, we're looking at a combination of, of all these different overlapping types of, of um, information. It also deals with a very, perhaps uh, not to get too philosophical, but very basic ontological problem. So what exactly are the drivers of say peripheralization and shrinkage? And how is it that this uh, helps us understand what exactly um, is going on in these rural environments? And to what degree are these different drivers even relevant or salient for understanding how to address these from a very um, fundamental policy uh, framework? So for example, I think uh, an, a, an ongoing uh, conversation I think that is, has been implicit but not necessarily elaborated very much today is um, the rural and its connection to the urban. And I think that um, the absence of say, uh, an indicator like housing from a lot of these debates and um, analyses, I think might actually open space for understanding these relationships uh, a bit more and helping us understand the connections between the urban and the rural a bit more, uh, uh, a bit more um, beyond even say uh, digital connectivity, because I think the digital component is also really, really important here. That is, and that's been raised uh, on a number of occasions here today. Another question pertains to the sort of difference between relative uh, marginality, absolute marginality, um, singular forms of marginality, singular drivers of marginality versus, or peripherality as well. Uh, versus compound forms of, of peripherality and, and marginality. And I think the, uh, the presentation by uh, the prophecy presentation and uh, the, uh, the escape presentation as well um, really gave, as, uh, actually in Anna's presentation by, from Norwegi as well, these all sort of get at different pieces of what exactly is this, uh, are the different indicators that we uh, need to grapple with in terms of better understanding what is going on in these rural contexts and how they can help us understand what's going on in or compare them to other rural contexts elsewhere. Um, another issue I think that's uh, really important that has been raised here on several occasions is, uh, is a technical issue. So, um, we have in Europe, uh, we commonly use uh, different scales of analyses, so nuts level indicators. And uh, there's an increasing understanding, I think, from the presentations that we've seen today that grid level analyses is actually the, the way that we should be perhaps moving to get a much finer and more uh, nuanced understanding of what is happening in not only Norway, but also other, other areas of Europe. And then I would say that there's a, a final component here that I think is actually uh, has been, I think, present also throughout all the discussions that we've been having, um, not the least of which has uh, come from uh, Eduardo himself, is the question of human capital itself. So who exactly is implicated in, in, these, uh, in these issues? Um, at what scale? Uh, to what end are, are are we actually trying to, to what end are, are these different groups implicated? And to what end are we actually trying to achieve here? And I think um, a really interesting component or interesting sort of conversation that we've been having that hasn't necessarily been very explicit 
is um, that that pertains to the question of, are we talking about, um, when we're talking about rural environments, are we looking at, um, a, when we're talking about addressing problems in these rural environments, are we looking at it from a perspective of growth? Are we looking at it from a perspective of degrowth? Are we looking at it from the perspective of a post-growth uh, lens? And I think depending upon what that uh, overall objective is, I think will tell us a lot, a, a lot about what kinds of actions are going to be implemented here. And I think um, Irene also, I think, raised a really important point regarding the importance of understanding not only the sharing of uh, knowledge and expertise and, uh, and uh, knowledge, knowledge and expertise, but also the sharing and, and knowledge, the sharing of uh, resources themselves. And um, I think in um, Bjornan's uh, discussion of the cooperation between Sweden and Norway, I think is a really great example of how uh, sharing does not necessarily all have to imply controlling uh, resources and that the sharing of these resources can actually be a really good way of generating much greater mutual benefits for, for everybody. Uh, and so that comes back to the question of who's involved and what are the different ways in which people can buy in and be a part of these, these uh, activities or initiatives, let's say. And, uh, and so I guess that uh, ultimately, and I, I'm uh, channeling my uh, Norwegian colleagues here, I think finally, I think there's a, a fundamental question about um, what this means in terms of distributive justice as well. So who exactly is, how is it that different populations themselves bear different uh, degrees of burdens and, and responsibilities vis-a-vis -vis other groups? And I think that, um, I think these are implicit questions that I think inform all of these discussions. But um, I think going back to the question that uh, has been raised in previous, uh, previously today is the sense that Europe is not only about uh, promoting a green, green growth, let's say, but also uh, a, a, just, uh, a just European community as well. And so I think, how is it that we can also think about um, very fundamental questions of justice and distributive justice uh, as it pertains to rural environments? And so um, I think for a final sort of sense of, uh, you know, are we really at a crossroads here? Um, what lessons can we take away? I think these are questions I think we need to leave open and I think they should be very much hopefully informing uh, future discussions that are happening within SBON and uh, all of your, your own uh, local um, administrations and work uh, more broadly.